Our broth, are you ready? Then let's go. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 12, lesson number six. The roots of complex numbers. Dun, dun, dun. Given any complex number W, it can be shown that there's two square roots of W. In other words, there's two different complex numbers that when you square them, you will end up with W. It can also be shown that there's three cube roots of W. So in other words, three different complex numbers that when you cube them, you would end up with W. In general, for any positive integer n, there are n complex numbers for which z to the power of n equals w. In other words, there's going to be four fourth roots of w. So if you worked out the fourth root of w, you would get four different answers. There's going to be four complex numbers that would give you that. If you wanted to work out the fifth root of w, there's five complex numbers that when you work them out to the power of five, they would give you that w. And so on. Let's move on to look at some examples using that. Example 1. Write the complex number 2 plus 2 root 3i in polar form. Part B. Find two complex numbers z for which z squared equals 2 plus root 3i, expressing each root in the form r bracket cos theta plus i sine theta, which is another way of saying polar form. Well done. And C. Show the two roots on a single Argand diagram. So for part A, this is something that we have done multiple times before. There's lessons mainly on looking at the roots, so I'm just going to give you the answer to part A. If you want to see where it all comes from, look back to Polar Form 1, Lesson 12.3. Writing 2 plus 2 root 3i in polar form, that can be done to give you 4 bracket cos 60 plus i sin 60. That's the answer, as I said, if you want an explanation where that comes from, look back to this lesson. Part B, find two complex numbers z for which z squared equals 2 plus 2 root 3i, expressing each root in the form r bracket cos theta plus i sine theta. So we know from part one we had our z squared equals 2 plus 2 root 3i, and when we wrote that in polar form, this is what we got for bracket cos 60 plus i sine 60. If we're wanting to work out the root so the square root, well, to go from z squared to z, we're square rooting it. So really what we're doing is we're taking the square root of the 4 bracket cos 60 plus i sine 60. So we've got all that to the power of 1 half. Really, when we have a complex number to the power of something, what we would have is the modulus to the power of whatever that is. So here the modulus is 4, so we would have 4 to the power of a half. In other words, the square root of 4. And what we do is we multiply the argument by that number. So because it's z to the power of n, we'd have n theta. Here, because we're wanting it to the power of 1 half, we would have a half times a theta. So it would be a half times the 60, and a half times the 60 as well with the sign. If you start to work that out, well, the square root of 4 gives you 2, and that would be cos of 30 plus i sine 30. That there will be our first root. For the second root, how do we go about doing that? Because if we do the same thing, again, if we work out the square root, we'll just get back to this answer. What we need to do is we need to work out another complex number that's going to be the same as the 4 cos 60 plus i sine 60. And to do that, think about cos of 60 and sine of 60. You know with sine and cos, they repeat themselves every how many degrees? 360! Perfect. So what we can do is we can find one that's the same but different, if you know what I mean, by adding 360 degrees onto the argument. So we can say then that z squared equals... It's going to be the 4 cos 60, but if we add 360 on, that's not really changing it. So it's going to be cos of 60, add 360. Plus, and then again, you would have i sine 60, plus, again, the 360. Meaning then, we'd have z squared equals 4 bracket, cos of 420, plus i sine 420. That is what z squared is going to be, but we want to work out z. So to get z, well, that's going to be our complex number square rooted, so to the power of a half. And to do that, what you do is you take the modulus to that power, so it would be the 4 to the power of a half, and you can multiply the argument by whatever the index is. Here the index is going to be a half, so it's going to be a half times the 420 in both the cos 
and sine. Work that out. The square root of 4 is still 2, and you would have cos of 210 plus I sine 210. Meaning the two roots that you end up with, well, we had 2 cos 30 plus I sine 30, and we've also got the 2 cos 210 plus I sine 210. Woo! So we're getting two answers because we're wanting to work out the square root. Square root means we'd have two answers. Part C, show the two roots on a single argand diagram. So if you're argand diagram, you'll have your x and your y axis, but remember, it's going to be a real and imaginary. The way this is done is take your first root, the 2. Well, the 2 means you're going to have a length of 2. You'll have a distance of 2. So from the origin, you're wanting to come out 2. So you can show that there. And you're going to be going round 30 degrees. So you're coming out 2 and you're going round 30 degrees. Draw a line from that point to the origin and you know that's going to be 30 degrees. So that will be Z1. That will be the first root. For the second one, what you will have is your 2 cos 210 plus I sine 210. So again, from the 0, you know you're going to be going round 210 degrees. So go around 210 degrees, put a little dot there, and again, you know you're going to be a distance of 2 from the origin. So you'd be going around 2, and then it's going to be the negative 2, and then that will be a distance as well. Really, what you're doing is you're just going around in a circle. So you end up with the roots lying on a circle with just a radius of 2. What do you notice about both roots? Perfect, they're evenly spaced. So on an Argand diagram, the roots will lie diametrically opposite each other on the circle. In general, the roots of any complex number will always lie equally spaced on the circumference of a circle with centre O. Really what that means is if you know what one root is, you can easily find the other. If it's a square root, well, they would just be diametrically opposite. So they'd be at opposite ends of the diameter. Or if you had three roots, well, again, you know they're going to be evenly spaced. Or four roots, they'll be evenly spaced. So work, once you work out one, you can easily work out what the others would be. Example two, write the complex number negative eight plus eight root three i in polar form. Part b, find the two complex numbers z for which z squared equals negative eight plus eight root three i, expressing each root in the form r bracket cos theta plus i sine theta. And c, show the two roots on a single argand diagram. Once again, for part a, I've done quite a few examples with that. Look back to example 12.3 if you're still unsure about how to go from the form x plus y i into polar form. Look back to that lesson and you'll see how it's done. Really, the negative 8 plus 8 root 3i can be written in the form 16 bracket cos 120 plus i sine 120. This lesson's all to do with the roots, so moving on to part b, looking at how that is done. Find the two complex number z for which z squared equals negative 8 plus 8 root 3i, expressing each root in polar form. Brilliant. So we know from part 1 z squared equals this in the form x plus yi, but we can rewrite that in polar form. If we're wanting to work out that first root, well, we know to go from z squared to z, we would have this number in polar form to the power of a half. We're just taking the square root of that. To work out the square root of a complex number, well, all you're doing is you're taking the modulus and you're going to have the square root of that. So that'll be 16 to the power of a half. And what you do with the argument is you multiply that by your index. Because you're wanting the square root, it's a half. So you multiply the argument by a half. So you'll have cos of a half times 120 plus I sine a half times 120. The square root of 16 is 4, so you're going to have 4 cos half of 120 is 60. So you'll have cos 60 plus I sine 160. With the first example, what we did was we added 360 degrees onto that. And then we worked out the square root once again. But there's a quicker way of doing that. Remember with the Argand diagram, what we noticed is that the roots were evenly spaced around that circle. So we know if we've got a circle, it's 360 degrees. And if we're going around 60 degrees for one of the roots, we can easily work out what the other one would be. 
The second root is going to lie diametrically opposite of this first root on the circumference of a circle uh, with center O and radius. Well, the radius is just the modulus, so the radius 4. So to work out that other root, what you do is you think, right, well, the whole circle is 360 degrees. Divide that by 2 because there's two roots, and you get them 180 degrees apart. Which means then all you have to do is you take that first root and add on 180 degrees to the argument, to the angle. So you'd have cos of 60 by 180 and sine of 60 add 180. Meaning then the second one you will have is for cos 240 add i sine 240. So the two roots would be the four bracket cos 60 plus i sine 60 and the four bracket cos 240 plus i sine 240. Once again, for part C, we're asked to show them in an R GAND diagram. You know they're going to be evenly spaced on that circle. So you're going to be drawing the circle. You know the modulus is 4, so you know you're going to be going through at 4, and then 4, and then 4, and then negative 4. And for the angles, you're coming around 60 degrees, so you can mark that on, and then you're going to be coming around 240 degrees. Even though your Argan diagram really goes from 0 around to 180, and 0 around to negative 180, if you think about this circle going around 240 degrees, well, all you have to really do is take away 360 degrees from the 240, and you get negative 120. And you can see that that's where that one will lie. It lies between that 0 and 180 at the negative 120. So what you've got is perfectly fine. Example 3. Find three cube roots of the complex number 8i, expressing each root in the form x plus yi, where x and y are real numbers, and then show all three roots on a single argand diagram. Let's go. So what this means is the three cube roots of 8i are the three roots of the equation. Well, it means if we're wanting the cube root, well, we could say that you had some number cubed gives you that 8i. So that's what you'd start with. So you start with z cubed equals 8i. What we need to do now is we have to write that 8i in polar form. Look back to that lesson 12.3 from going from writing your complex number in the form x plus yi to polar form because this 8i can be written in the form 8 bracket cos 90 plus i sine 90. But for that one there, you could probably work it out because you've got zero for the real part. It means you're going along zero and you would just be going up eight. So you know the modulus is just going to be a length of eight. And if you're going along zero and up, 8, well, you know you're just going directly up, so you know the angle would be 90 degrees, so that one there is definitely an easier one. We're starting off with z cubed equals 8i then, which means then that z cubed would equal that number in polar form. So, z cubed equals 8 bracket cos 90 plus i sine 90. To work out that first root, well, to go from z cubed to z, you're taking the third root. So it will be all of that to the power of one third. Using de Moivre's theorem, if you have your z to the power of n, so here we've got it to the power of a third, what you would do is you would have the modulus to the power of one third, and you would have a third times the argument. So you have the 8 to the power of a third, and then cos of a third times by the 90. Work that out, and the cube root of 8 is 2. Brilliant. And you would have cos 30 plus i sine 30. To work out the second root and the third root, once again, what you want to think is, well, you know they're going to be evenly spaced around a circle. And the radius this time, because the modulus was 2, the radius will be 2. And for the argument, well, we had an angle there of 30 degrees. And we know the other ones will be evenly spaced from that. So a whole circle is 360 degrees, divide that by 3, and you know the angles will be 120 degrees apart. So to work out the second root, all you have to do is take the first one and go round another 120 degrees. So you would have the 2 cos 30, but add onto the 30 120 degrees, giving you 2 bracket cos 150. Do the same thing with sine, so you've got i sine 30 for the first root, add 120 on, so it's i sine 150. So that'll be the second root. And then for the third, what do you think you do? Add another 120. 
Perfect. You just add another 120 degrees. So you've got the two. That's not changing. It's still a modulus of two. But the argument, instead of being 150, will be another 120 degrees around. So that'll give you two a bracket cos 270 plus I sine 270. Meaning then a summary of the roots. We've got Z1. The two bracket cos 30 plus I sine 30. We've got Z2 with 150 degrees. And then we've got Z3, which will be the 270. We are asked in the question to express each root in the form X plus YI. But we've got them here in polar form. So how would you go about expressing it in the form X plus YI? What do you think you do? Perfect. All you do is work out the cos of 30. Cos of 30, you know by now, is going to be root 3 over 2. So it's going to be 2 bracket root 3 over 2. And the sine of 30 is half. Good. So it's just going to be i times a half or a half i. Multiply out the brackets there and that will leave you with root 3 plus i. With the 2 bracket cos 150 plus i sine 150, again work out the cos of 150 and the sine of 150. Cos of 150 is negative root 3 over 2, and the sine of 150 is a half. So you'd end up with 2 bracket negative root 3 over 2 plus a half i, and if you multiply out the brackets, you get negative root 3 plus i. And with the 2 bracket cos 270 add sine 270, just use your graphs for that. You know that the cos of 270 degrees is 0. And for sine 270, well, that is negative 1. Multiply out the brackets there, and you end up with 0, take away 2i, or just negative 2i. So that's going to be a summary of the roots. And what you have to do next is just show them on an Argand diagram. So if you're Argand diagram, you know for each one you've got a modulus of 2. So they will lie evenly spaced on the circle with a radius of 2. So you know you'd be passing through it 2 here, 2, negative 2, because you're going back to, and negative 2 here as well. For the first one, you came around 30 degrees. So from 0, you came around 30 degrees. That will represent Z1. You want to come around 150 degrees. So go around another 120 to 150 degrees. That there will represent Z2, the second root. And for the third one, you're coming around from 0, you're going around 270 degrees. That there will be Z3 for this line here, which is a bit harder to see. Again, you're with the angle. You know you're going between 0 and 180, and then 0 and negative 180. But when you're showing it here with the 270, if you take 360 degrees away from that, you'd end up with negative 90, which is where that one is. So that would be your roots on your Argand diagram. Try these questions in the Unit 3 booklet on page 65. Any problems, let me know. Best of luck. Woo! Bye.